Let's play sex. <laughs> Let's play sex. The designer, how did this happen? How did the designer think of this? <laughs> this is terrifying. That's awesome. I'm oh, having a bit of an existential crazy moment. <laughs> It's estimated there are around 37,000 love hotels in Japan, bringing in about $50 billion of revenue every year. It's a big business, and it's hardly a surprise given how many families in Japan live in multi-generational households with walls made of paper. But love hotels aren't like regular hotels. They're pretty unique in more ways than one. And by the end of this video, you'll be an expert on the subject. Recently, through a friend of a friend who owns a stylish chain of love hotels, here in the city of Sendai, we were able to go in and explore the rooms. I'd been told that this love hotel in particular had some pretty ridiculous and crazy rooms, and the hotel certainly didn't disappoint. After meeting the owner, Yasushi Shishido, first he took us into one of his standard rooms to show us the kind of services you can get in a love hotel. Da -da -da. Whoa. It's like being in another world all of a sudden. The first thing you notice when you walk into a love hotel is it's very closed off from the world. There's no windows. Obviously you can see outside if you want to. There's windows there, but you feel very contained. Very romantic. <laughs> oh, yeah. The one thing that differentiates any love hotel from a normal hotel is these extra special amenities. Uh, so here we have honey drops. Mm. Body massage lotion. Good for your skin, apparently. Yeah. Yoku, it's quite muscular. It's quite muscular. And then you've got some condoms here. It's my favourite. Big honey. It's not it's not a small honey, that's big. What's this? I'll give him your glass. There's a eye mask. And oh <laughs> it's a present? Present. 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 You know when you go to a normal hotel, you get a toothbrush, a uh, hairbrush, some other soap and stuff to take home. Here you get pink rotor, uh, which is a, you know, a vibrator. Yeah, so you get a vibrator and an eye mask. Not bad, eh? And big honey. <laughs> Costume. Cosplay. Yeah. Oh, you could have. Free. Free? Two, two rental free. Really? Which is the most popular? Popular. It's Nikki Garu. Schoolgirl. Maid. 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 Maid and schoolgirl is the most popular. There's so many. Takusan. Takusan. Oi there. Gojushuri. 50. 50 varieties. 50 varieties of cosplay costumes to rent. I could stand here and look at these all day. Uh, out of curiosity rather than some sort of perversion. But like, uh, what's that? Princess. Kimagure Princess. Okay. Okay. Kore de Shimon. Alright, so we've ordered our uh, incredible costumes. Having ordered our costumes, we went to collect them from a hole in the wall near the front door. Discretion is one of the key elements of staying in a love hotel, where you'll very rarely see any staff during your stay. Even choosing your room is done through a computer screen. And when it comes to paying, it's also usually done through a machine built into the wall of the room. This discretion and secrecy means you really feel like you're in a bubble the whole time you're in a love hotel. A bubble filled with incredible costumes. Oh yeah. Very romantic. So that's half the reason to come to a love hotel. You can dress up like your favourite princess. This is an air stewardess <laughs> uniform. <laughs> My head's big head. Hey. One foot. So food and drink, alcohol is very, very cheap here. And the reason is, when people come here, they often come by car. And if they drink alcohol and eat lots of food, they wanna, they're going to stay longer. Uh, so they find by having a lower price food and drink, people actually stay longer. And you make more money. Because Love Hotels often use a pay-as-you-go system, they try to entice customers to stay by providing them with everything you could possibly ever want. Food, movies, beer, costumes. Why would you ever want to leave? This is my breakfast. Beer. The world's biggest honey toast. I don't know how I'm going to be able to eat that. Uh, chicken karyage, which is fried chicken. Uh, hamburger with rice and salads. And uh, potato. This is ridiculous. There's so much here. I mean, it's, what time is it? It's 11 o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> this is my breakfast. Standard love hotels. 
Most of like hotels. You get a bath with a jacuzzi built in it and the television. I mean, what more could you want? That's the best thing in the world ever. Oh. And the final touch for romance? Mood lighting. So relaxing. Look at the bubbles. Oh my god. <laughs> One interesting thing here that I've just discovered, this body soap is unscented. Uh, so the idea is you can come here, have a bath, have a shower, use this and no one will ever know that you went to a love hotel. So you come home and no one will smell that you've showered or anything. And uh, I never thought about that. That's one thing you never, you would never have thought about, would you? But it makes sense really. This body soap could be the difference between life and divorce. So uh, there's even magazines where you can choose an escort as well. So one hour with someone is 15,000 yen, which is about $150 or so. And uh, this is there's quite a lot in this magazine. <laughs> oh my God. In Japanese, a popular term for escort girl is uh, delivery health. I'm not even making that up. They're like You would refer to them as delivery health because I guess they're delivering health. Our shop is a shop only amateur wife. These are amateur wives. I don't know what the definition of amateur wife is. Someone who's not very good at being a wife and is therefore cheating on their husband by being an escort. Having checked out all the services and amenities you can get by staying in a love hotel, we were shown to some of the more exotic and stylish rooms. <laughs> What's going on? You know, like, it feels like a room in a hotel in Las Vegas. You know in the movies you see these crazy elaborate rooms with quirky design features. This is like that. This is bonkers. There's a staircase. I don't know where it goes yet. What's, the, what's going on here? Bean bags, goats, pandas, geese. <laughs> what's all that about? I don't know. But this is, this is awesome. Wow. If I was rich, this is the kind of room I would have as my bedroom. Just like this. This is it. Look at this toilet. Da, da, da. Yeah, if you sit, you sit on that toilet, you feel like a god, I imagine. Fuck it up. <laughs> so, when when the girl's in the shower, you can sit in there and hide. Apparently, the girl goes in the shower, you can sit in there and peep over the edge and look. I'm not even joking. That's what it's designed for. This feels like something out of um, Alice in Wonderland. You know. Fuck it up. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> oh my god. Get your seat, get your seat. Right. It's quite hot in here. Oh my fuck. <laughs> 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 this is terrifying. But awesome. You've found the secret loft, well done. <laughs> this is bonkers. There must be at least a hundred hundred teddy bears and goose and ducks and things. All right, let's get out of this nightmare loft. So this is the peeping, peeping room, peeping box. The idea is the girls in the bath or whatever, you can look through like that. <laughs> what a sight. Not, not the sort of thing. I'd want to peep at normally. Oh, this is oh, having a bit of an existential fucking crazy moment. <laughs> There's a sense of when they were making this room, they just thought money is of no object. <laughs> it's just the design. What the, the designer? How did this happen? How did the designer think of this? What were they doing? I can see myself coming here for love and uh, spending most of my time just walking around, checking out the, uh, the interior. Whether it's the weird, crazy teddy bear cave, or the hole in the ground for peeping and people in the bath, or the temple shrine toilet, you know. I could spend hours in here just looking around and being mind fucked by the design. <laughs> what? What happened? How did this happen? This is like a cinema room. So, sit down and 
ひな壇だんだんだんイエーイプレイレッツプレイセックス Let's play sex <laughs> Oh, you could have so much fun here You could have so much fun So in here you can sit on the toilet and uh, watch TV down the other end of the corridor So, you know It's good, isn't it? Ooh. You wouldn't know that this discreet little building has so many crazy and exciting rooms inside it Okay, so one night in a hotel room like this, in a love hotel room like this, is about 12,000 yen, uh, which is about $120 or so. It's pretty reasonable though, for what it is. And what it is, is a theme park in a room. These rooms are more than just a hotel room, as you've seen. I mean, this is like a theatre and a children's play area rolled into one, you know. And the other one, I feel you feel like you're in some sort of exotic Las Vegas hotel. But, uh, it's just fun. So there you have it, the magic of love hotels. If you're in Japan, why not grab a room? And if you're ever in Sendai, you can find the details to this hotel, the Hotel Leon, in the description box below. And then you too can sit in a hole or a teddy bear cave. You won't ever want to leave. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. This room is absolutely ridiculous. Grrrr. <laughs>